In this video, I'm going to be discussing a striker fired 9mm service pistol that comes ready to mount optics from the factory and has interchangeable grip frames that are not the serialized part of the firearm. In fact, the serialized part is a trigger cassette style system that houses all of the fire control parts. You might be thinking at this point, I'm going to pull out a Springfield Echelon. Nope, that is not the case. We have a Beretta APX. It's been doing this for some time, well before the Springfield Echelon came out, but after the SIG 320. So we're gonna do a tabletop breakdown of this pistol, go over the features and put in some range time. This particular APX came with two 17 round magazines, three interchangeable back straps to switch out to fit the shooter's hand better, small, medium, and large, and a Burris Fast Fire 3 mounted to it already from the factory. For those that aren't aware, Burris is a sister company of Beretta. I've already reconfigured the magazine release to be left-handed for me. It's very easy to reverse the magazine catch for left or right-handed operation. I've also already zeroed the Burris Fast Fire, and I have to admit that I do not like it. Uh, it sits a bit high on this pistol, so I'm going to be swapping the Fast Fire out for a Steiner MPS. Steiner is another one of Beretta's sister companies, and I believe the MPS will sit much lower on here. So I'm going to swap out that optic and then continue with the review. So while I have the optic off, I thought I'd show what the underneath of it looks like. There are no optics that can direct mount to the APX. You have to use intermediary plates to mount it. So it's kind of like the Glock MOS in that regard, um, other than the hollow suns that are direct mount to the Glock MOS at this point. So everything on the APX is going to sit a bit higher than it will on other equivalent pistols. We're out here at the range now to actually shoot this Beretta APX. Yeah, and in the meantime, since I did that tabletop with the APX A1, uh, Beretta sent me a compact tactical model, which has a 15 round magazine rather than 17 rounds. It comes with a threaded barrel and it has suppressor height sights to begin with. Okay, and that's why they're calling it tactical. Yep. And you haven't shot either of these really yet, besides zeroing. Correct. Okay, so this is the full size, and I have not handled these whatsoever. The only thing I could say so far is I loaded the magazine, and you do want a magazine loading tool. Yeah, it, do, it does ship with one. I forgot to bring it out here today. Uh, those springs are stiff. More than, you, more than usual, I would mm -hmm. say. It was actually quite difficult. But I also have an extendo which maybe adds to it, because I've got, what, 21 in this? I believe so. So I've never fired this before. The only thing I could say first impression is the, uh, the pad of the trigger is quite wide, and dry firing it, it's a heavy trigger, but crisp. Yeah, there, there's, it is definitely uh, heavier than some of the other striker-fired autos, but it's consistent. It's, there's enough. not a lot of take up to it or anything. So behind me, you'll see I've got a spinner target, and I figured why not make first shots fired the spinner? Makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Well, I guess you're fine. All right, it's a zero issue, it's not a gun issue. I am jerking the trigger a little bit. As I said, the trigger is a hard press. And if you're not used to it, which I'm not used to this gun yet, it's the first time I've fired it, I am kind of yoinking on it. However, for whatever reason, uh, now that I know where the zero is for me, I have to shoot at the, I have to aim at one o'clock and it hits low left, which would be weird if I'm jerking, you'd think it'd be going low right. At any rate, once I figured out the zero, which was high right for me, impacting low left, no problem on the spinner. So one of the things interesting about the APX was that this was submitted to the Next Generation Army handgun program. Yeah, the modular handgun system trials that eventually picked the SIG 320 as the M17. And in that regard, it has some similarities, right? It's got a, it's a cassette system, mm -hmm. um, striker fired, polymer, all the things. And according to Beretta, it passed all of their tests. All right. So what that tells us is it basically came down to a financial decision. Probably. So. Financial or manufacturing, right? Mm -hmm. But so this was a contestant in that program, passed all the tests, and therefore was by that stance militarily approved. It just didn't make it to be the official selected gun. Yep. Spinner 
Your mouth. Okay, I'm going to give the compact a whirl. We got two different samples here to try out. You saw how Fagan shot the spinner with this. He's the spinner master. I am not. But let me see if I do a little better with the compact. As you can see, same magazines. That just sticks out the bottom a little bit. Well, I actually did a lot better with the compact gun. I'm not sure why, maybe it's just a zero, but he just shot it real well, and as you can see, I just shot it real well as well. These are cassette trigger systems. I actually feel like the trigger on this compact one's just a little better than the one on the full size, but that's completely subjective. Um, either one of these are clearly serviceable. So let's go ahead and bring Fagan up here with the full size gun. <laughs> Seem like the same for you. I, I do have more time on these triggers than you do. Mm. I think that's the main thing. The, the, the problem with reviewing handguns in general is familiarity. That's true. And how just doing 100 reps of dry fire yeah. can make a big difference in being familiar with the gun before you go out and actually shoot it. That makes sense. Okay, so it made no difference for you whatsoever, but I actually liked the compact better. And when you were kind of pointed out, the grip angle is actually different. It's just different enough that it doesn't have that kind of like swell on the back. And this has the smallest uh, grip frame insert on it. Yeah. It has like a small, a medium, a large. It ships with it. It has just more of a swell out. Mm. And even though I have relatively big hands, I always like the smallest grip inserts best because they make the gun feel a little more vertical uh, to me uh, and point better. I don't really like the whole lumpy thing or the, the hump. In fact, I even feel that way about 1911s. Mm -hmm. Like the original World War I 1911 without the lump on it, I actually like it better. Yeah, def, def, definitely in agreement with you there. So even though I shot them both relatively equally, I like the feel of the compact better. And I'm right there with you. This one, the first run wasn't good. I had one malfunction. That's an anomaly. I'm using Winchester white box, by the way. Uh, and then the zero was off for me, or maybe it was the grip angle. I don't know. But I picked this up and immediately had no problem. All right. And you shot better, but you're a spinner master and I'm not. That said, this was, a, I took to the tactical model instantly. And this one, I felt like I was fighting against it a little bit. Yeah, so here's the interesting thing is with these cassette style system guns is the, the serialized part is a cassette. Right. So you can swap out the, uh, the grip frames. I don't know that there's any aftermarket grip frames available for these yet, but theoretically you could take the same cassette and have a different slide and frame available to turn it into a compact or a compact tactical and switch it back and forth between a full size. And who knows, maybe they'll have a long slide version eventually. It's like the equivalent of an AR-15 lower, you can kind of change everything as long as the lower stays the same. Right, and, and one of the things that like goes understated uh, with he that system is that if you damage the grip in any way, which the most common thing that gets worn or damaged if you're carrying a gun every day is the grip. Mm -hmm. Like banging around, getting in and out of a car, the, you know, the office chair you're sitting in every day, et cetera. This is what gets worn out is everything back here. So you can just throw that $50, $60 piece of plastic in the trash and get a new one, and you're not having to get a new serial number. Now, we just looked it up, and the prices on these right now are quite reasonable. Here's some of my initial takeaways. The magazines are extraordinarily hard to load, like a loading tool. My thumb was cramping already. You need a loading tool or want a loading tool. The size or the width of the shoe of the trigger is wider than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. That's not bad, but different, right? Yep. So, like, there's a lot of meat and a lot of surface area there. And the trigger press, to me, feels heavy, although it is consistent and crisp. Mm -hmm. In general, I would say this might be the gun for you, but you should go try it first if you can. Right, and, and certainly that price point affects the uh, uh, reasonability of it for a lot of people at this point, too. Oh, absolutely. Now, the thing is, it does kind of... So many of these guns feel identical in the hand. You pick them up, they're, they're exactly... You can't tell them apart. This does feel different. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Yeah, it, it, it definitely is not the normal striker fired nine millimeter feel. Which might mean that this is the right gun for you, or it might mean it's not the right gun for you based on if it fits you. Yeah, handguns are such a personal choice too. Um, you have to have a gun that, that fits your hand well and also 
feels right to you. And we've seen people that just, the gun's perfectly serviceable, mm -hmm. but for them, they have a bad feeling about it and therefore they can't use it effectively. To be honest, I kind of felt that way about this one right off the bat, mm -hmm. but did not feel that way about this one, which, whatever. <laughs> right. Weird. So that said, Beretta sent these to us, right? Correct. Although you did upgrade them, you bought some stuff, you modified them. Yeah, I, I, I bought, you know, the flashlight and the optics that went on these, and uh, I bought some extra magazines to and go you with them. you changed up the colored grip panels too, right? Uh, that came green, which was oh, cool. Okay. Uh, I switched this one to brown just because I thought it looked cooler. Another thing you could do because it's a cassette system. Yep. So with that said, the ammunition and some of the components and such were possible because of people like you supporting this channel via patreon.com slash TV. If you like these kind of really honest, really raw reviews, please consider supporting us if you aren't already. If you can't, I understand, just share and subscribe with your friends. That said, thank you Beretta for sending these guns to us. Yeah, Beretta, Beretta's been uh, uh, a great contributor to the channel mm -hmm. and uh, they're always eager to send stuff to us to get our honest feedback on it. Cool. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.